Well, good evening, everybody. It is November. No, it is December 15th. 65 degrees here in southeast Louisiana. And this is Barry's Best Honey. And I'm Mike. And I do bees, but not at this point in time. So I'm out here showing you what I do this time of year. Remember, I don't do how-to videos, guys. I do how I do videos. So what do I do this time of year? Nothing. I gotta be honest, folks, I really don't. And when I say nothing, I mean nothing. I really, I get to this point of my season and I don't, I don't work with the bees at all. I don't open them at all. I set them up for winter and I leave them alone. I make sure they have food. I make sure who's alive and who's not alive. I clean any dead outs that I may have had. I come do all my combines. I do whatever I have to do and leave them for what they are. If they're struggling and they weren't worth combining, they have to make it on their own. If they're normal or even slightly less than normal or even above normal, we leave them alone. I weigh them, make sure they got food and that's it. They need food, I feed them two to one, we call it a day. Um, now, I'm not knocking, I can do a whole video on my philosophy of feeding because remember it's how I do. I'm not knocking anybody that does any certain way, shape or form, what they do for the winter, how they prepare. But I don't do things like sugar, uh, make sugar blocks for them. I don't, I don't put uh, what they call the mountain camp. I don't put insurance on them. I'm not knocking anybody that does. Everybody has to do what they need to do in their yard. They're their bees. Um, but my firm belief for my bees is I feed them or make sure they are fed or make sure they have stores going into winter. Anything above and beyond that is emergency feed. Um, I do see a good need for maintenance with the Hive Alive fondant. It'd be nice to put it on everyone, but it's just not what I do because I keep things on a low budget. I keep things simple as I can, and I try not to have to do a lot of work uh, leading up to the winter. So that brings me to what do I do? Nothing. So around before November and December, honestly, folks, I take a break. I really do. I don't even begin doing any um, building boxes, painting, doing anything. I leave all my boxes stored and I've got all this stuff that needs maintenance. And I'm gonna explain a little bit about all this, but uh, I'll wash and clean these boxes with some bleach water. I'll scrape them all. I'll cull rotten ones, which we're gonna do. I'll go out to my hives and mark rotten ones that I'm gonna cull in February. But I don't do any of this, like I'll bleach water all these and scrape them, but I won't do that until around January. I start on all that around January. I really do stop and take a break because one thing with me is I do work a full-time job five days a week and I have the weekends. So come spring, summer, I'm going 100 miles an hour with work, family, life in general, and bees. And that gives me only a little bit of time to do it. So when I get to this point, I just need a break from everything. And then I'll start making sure I got everything caught up come around, oh, January. <laughs> and that's when I'll really start finishing rendering my wax, doing everything I need to do, cleaning frames, waxing, washing, moving, building, painting, all that. That comes in January, February for me. But do keep in mind, it is the 15th of December. Literally in a month and a half, I'll be already have rotated boxes for the most part. I'll have been starting to pop lids and so that's a month and a half, two months, I'll be in the hives. I'll be in the hives. That's, that's how quick it turns around for us. So going back to the feeding, before a hive alive fondant, I would do emergency feeding if it was an emergency, meaning I'm January, February, and I don't have weight on the hives. Yeah, I'll put sugar on them, but I don't do it as insurance. I just make sure they're very, very heavy going in. Because the way I figure is, if I can see somebody like Ian can take singles and feed them up so heavy, then go put them in a bee barn where they stay clustered, for months compared to what I keep mine in uh, and he can do it with singles I can surely do it with doubles and have them ready to go so it's less maintenance for me if they get light now that they have Hive Alive fondant I'll put that on and um, I'll, that'll keep them going I've done that a couple years in a row now where I've needed to put that on folks before we go any further I want to wish you guys a very blessed and very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to come as we wrap up this season and go into this most wonderful and blessed of holidays the birth of our savior jesus christ so i just want to be sure 
I wish you guys a Merry Christmas. With regard to the feeding deal, you know, uh, being that you can build them up, and I see, I see Ian do that, and other commercial beekeepers do that without any interventions in the winter, it's not because I saw them do it, it's because that's what I learned early on is leave honey for the bees, leave plenty of weight for the bees, and they will take care of themselves through the winter. You give them their stores. Let me show you what I do during the winter months. The only thing I would really do anything with, and that is simply to check stores and do a what I used to call buzz check. You know, I would stick my ear to the colony. Um, I also would, you know, pick it up and feel the weight of it and stick my ears on the side of it. But now I got the old cheapo, you know, infrared gun it's a it's a v-bore i admit it i bought a v-bore but i mean it's cheapo i wanted to buy one for uh removal since i'm doing a few more these days uh it just makes it easier and i thought well let me get this cheapo one and what else will it be nice for oh it'd be nice for doing the bus checks basically i gotta look for a signature in the hive now and see if they're alive um and that's all i would do all went along just go through weigh them and listen to them now i'll weigh them and i'll Put the gun on them and see if there's any any uh, life in there. Something else we have issues with uh, is uh, right now, for example, I told you it was 65 degrees. Well, guess what? The bees fly at 65 degrees, but our nights are getting into the 30s and 40s. Now, this is all Fahrenheit, of course, um, and that's where they cluster. So they'll cluster until like 10 in the morning. Then when the sun's up good, they'll start coming out flying again. And the problem is, folks, is everything is gone now as far as blooming. There's nothing blooming. They can't get no nectar. So these bees will go out. Now, they don't go out like normal summer bees with droves going, wow, it's sunny and off we go, and you see them just coming and going and coming and going. But what you will see is a decent amount of bees coming and going, looking for nectar, coming back, can't find any. And uh, they tend to burn energy that way uh, when they go out looking for something that's not there. As you can see, nothing flying right now in the shade and this cool breeze, a very cool breeze. They have begun to start clustering, even though it's, it's probably down to 60 now that the sun's went down, getting into the 50s, and they're done. I saw one or two over there by the supers poking around, but they're done for the day pretty much. I saw one or two flying back over here a little, little bit ago, but nothing, see nothing. And this is a box I'll put a red dot on this year, and I'll be uh, replacing that in the fall, I mean in the spring. But that's it, that's what I do, folks. That's really all there is to it. Uh, it's just not a lot to do this time of year. And again, I like to take that, that couple months just to take a break, you know? Yeah, now and again, there's onesies, twosies that need to be checked, but, uh, you know, opened, but I try to avoid that at all costs. I don't like opening them at all. And not because you can't, and not because it's too cold or anything like that, because I just don't need to. And, and I surely don't need to be digging through and trying to find queens and stuff like that and damage a colony so I go through and start hunting around and damage a queen this time of year that's a dead out you know it'll live probably without a queen for a little while but what good is that gonna be there's a couple bees coming and going I see some bees coming and going from this one and that could be a bad sign to have that many bees coming and going and not any other bees around and they're not bothering me that might be a dead colony but I could put the gun on it and look, but this one was very, very weak. Like the bees are just kind of hanging out. There's one, he's hanging out. These ladies are doing a little bit of checking things out. So I can look at this. That one there looks weak. It's got a little cluster in it. That one's got a nice cluster. It's got a nice, they're all clustered already. I don't know if the one on the end is actually being robbed because it's dead and the bees I'm seeing, the heat signature I'm seeing is just a small area that they're robbing. I don't know. Have to tell, come out here at night, but there's a lot of bees coming and going and that's the only colony doing it and there's nothing to really gain out there. So, But they're calming down, so I don't know. This is a weak one, got a very low signature in the bottom. But it's got one. That bee actually has pollen on its legs, I'll be darned. See the little dot right down there? That's a little dot of a bee, I'm gonna take a picture. Huh. 
She's got pollen. She's got pollen. Let's see, can we get her in her hive? There she goes. So I'm looking at all the colonies. That one's good. That one's got something by the entrance. What's the side looking like? It's just nothing down in the back down there. But there's bees. And this one was kind of weak, but it's got a cluster in there as well. Nice signature. This one looks okay. And that one should be strong. But yet it's got a strange signature on it. Huh. This is a strong colony. That's odd. That's it. That's all I do. That's all I do this time of year. Check to see if they're live. Used to put my ear to them. Now I can use that. The ones that are sub suspect, I'll still stick my ear to them and weigh them. It's got plenty of bees or honey in it, and it's got bees coming out. The one with all the activity has got a brick sitting sideways. That tells me there was a problem with it. And now I'm seeing all those bees coming and going. They've calmed down because it's getting darker and cooler. It's probably dropped five degrees since we started the video. They're probably heading home for now. Any robbers, so I'll come out tonight and I'll check it. And if there's no cluster, it's a goner. I just tipped that one back and bumped it when I checked it and look what happened. It has a, <laughs> a good signature too. So folks, that's a quick trip with what I'm doing right now. Um, we do have videos coming up. I'll be making some. I do want to show you the benefits of wax moths one of these days. Um, but we'll be doing a lot of tedious tasks starting in January. One thing I will be doing is frames. Um, so these are frames like this stack and these few here are frames that I you know that's kind of normal what I did decided not to store uh, leftover from combines and dead outs everything else is stored um, this stack over here we got to clean all those but those are almost already clean those are left over from seasons past all these boxes have to be culled gone through repainted clean scraped all that good stuff of course got my super stored for the winter been here for a while but you see all those frames all those frames let me tell you where those came from each year, I have about half that stack left laying around in, in my barn. I call this a barn. No livestock, but I still call it a barn. And I have about that many laying around. About like this. About like this this side right here. This this little bit right here. That's what I have laying. And I got to the point where I wasn't really cleaning them that much. I was storing them. They were on my little rack. They were shoved in the corners. This season, I went through to clean out my barn. And I started stacking these things up. And I got... Those four stacks, one stack is mediums, the rest are all deeps that have just been gathering over the last probably five years. This stack over here that's already been pretty much brushed and need a little extra cleaning. And when I gather them up, boom, I have all these frames. I'm thinking, you know, over the past few years, I've been wondering why each season I'm building so many frames every year. And I'm like, I shouldn't be built. I mean, it's not like I'm losing 50 percent of my bees every year i should you know I, I do normal losses like folks i mean and i'm like why am i building so many frames well when i finally got everything together and put them all out here that's why i was building so many frames so i got a lot of frames i still got plenty of new ones to build but i'm not going to build them I'm gonna be cleaning these each winter uh re-waxing them uh i'm gonna show you how i do that i've done it in other ones but how i do show you how i do that um we're gonna be getting those clean and ready to go so i got all fresh foundation um with all these frames and that'll save my stack of foundation i got and my stack of frames i'm not gonna be buying a bunch of frames and foundation this year just a few boxes some bottoms here and there and uh man that's really about it so hey uh hopefully i can get caught up pretty easily i don't know we'll see but anyway i'm gonna go ahead and let you guys go it's getting evening i'm gonna go ahead and get in got to bottle some honey for the market tomorrow and get all that ready and i'm gonna go in and relax for the day just got off work a little while ago but uh Hey, I appreciate all you guys watching. Appreciate you hanging in there through the winter. All this little 
tidbit kind of stuff. You guys don't know how much I appreciate you watching. I'm humbled uh, by your support. I really am. And uh, just really, really appreciate it. So with that said, this is Barry's Best Honey. I'm Mike. And I'm not doing bees right now. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful week. And look, y'all have a very, very blessed and Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. There will probably be some videos here and there before then. But just want to wish you guys that. And uh, may God bless y'all. We'll see you later.